In the previous video, I showed you how to design this particular very, very simple uh, financial model. Let's now put some flesh in it by doing a numerical simulation. It's going to be extremely simple because you can only simulate what you have inside a system, and I don't have unemployment, I don't have uh, effective demand, etc., etc., tied up in this model as yet. So I'm just going to use a range of constants to give us various inflows and outflows into those accounts to see what we get. Now notice how the these words lend, interest, repay, wages, consumption by workers, bankers, input are all down the uh, left-hand side of the bank icon. If I right-click on any one of them, I get the choice to copy. Make a copy of it, drag it over here, and I can place it somewhere else on the palette, on the on the canvas. And I can do the same thing with loans down here. So right-click, choose copy, bring it over here. Now all this does is it lets me more easily uh, give equations values to these things rather than cluttering up around the actual bank icon. But I'll I'll just put some extremely simple systems in here. I'll just simply have loans growing at a constant rate. I'll use a constant here and say, uh, I call it L underscore rate, and say it's got a rate of 10% per annum. So loans are growing at 10% per annum. <coughs> and then have multiply, and I've now defined by using the wire key here what loans are. Instantly, I might talk a bit about the whole thing about wire and move and so on. <coughs> Pardon me. Once we get a bit more programming time in, into the system, we're going to make all the all the uh, wiring context sensitive. So if you happen to click here, the program knows you want to move. If you click here, it knows you probably want to draw a wire. If you click here and hold the shift key down, it knows you want to move the entire system around. If you click and drag, it'll know you want a lasso. But at the moment, we haven't got that intelligence in there, so you have to choose the mode you're in. I think there's an option here. Let's see. OK, not there. Operations. Let's see, it's over into File, Show Ports. OK. What you're doing, <coughs> pardon me again, when you're doing the wiring is you're actually linking from these little objects here. I'll leave them on screen for a while and show you what I mean. Now, you don't have to do what I've done with Lend over here. You can actually attach the whole thing to the um, to the bars here. So I'll do that with the next one. Let's imagine what's your interest. Well, you're going to pay interest on loans. Uh, and that's, at, say, the rate of, say, 3% per annum. So the interest flow in there is going to be what's, in the, what's currently loading in the loan account multiplied by that rate of interest. So if I bring the multiply here, and I then wire from that output port to here, and from here to interest, and then go from here to loans, OK, I've wired that up equally. I think you can agree that's uh, a bit messier. By the way, when I click on Move and I go near a wire, you'll see a blue dot turns up. If you click on the blue dot and drag, you can change the shape. So it's not quite as ugly. I'll just uh, now come up again. I get a second dot, and I can now make it a, a more complete loop. But the reason why we've done this like, the capacity of moving things away from it is just so you can organize things more easily uh, away from the uh, where the, the, the godly icon is to just to reduce your amount of clutter. And notice those dots are still turning out there. If you want to get it through to those, go and try redraw. And you can also just say, get rid of the showing the ports. I just wanted to show you what was actually going on there. So I've wired those up through. Let's now use the, the right click and choose copy to move repay away from here. What is repayment going to be based upon? It'll be based on the current level of loans. So I can again take another copy of loans here, right click and choose copy, place it down here. And so your repayment rate's going to be some, again, constant. I'll make this R underscore R for repayment. And say so that's say so you repay 5% per annum, or rather than the 10% rate of growth of loans. So loans are going to grow by 5%. Or the repayment's going to be running at a rate of 5% per annum. And then we want to have wages. Now, because I've got nothing else in the system, all I'm going to say is wages are some rate of turnover of the amount of money in the firm's account. So right-click here, take a copy, and I'll just use the constant W here. I'll use something much more sophisticated later. And so, so the amount of money in the firm's account turning over three times per annum is the wages bill. So I now multiply that by W and wire that up. And finally, I've got these last two, consumption by workers and consumption by bankers. Well, consumption by workers will be related in the simple system to the amount of money in the worker's account. And again, I'll, let's say consumption by workers will be C underscore W. And I'll say they turn over their accounts 26 times a year, which means they're basically spending on a fortnight to fortnight basis.
And then for the bankers, I'll relate intermediate consumption of the amount of money in the safes, uh, in the safe at the time. And I'll say that sum rate, I'll call that uh, again C underscore B, and say that this is the turnover of the amount of money there once a year and buying intermediate goods and you know, Lamborghinis and things like that. So we now come here and multiply. Okay, and I've now wired up a fairly complete, very, very simple, but a basic financial model. So let's take a look at how it actually runs. Let's bring a graph down. Place the graph over here. Well, let's simply graph the amount of money in the loans account. So I take a copy of that, drag it over here, and in the firm's account. Right over here. And let's make this diagram larger by using the resize command. And now wire loans up to the black pen and firms to the red pen. And let's simulate and you get growth in the amount of money in the system. That's a simple model. I'll now save this as uh, Godly Bank or Godly Sim. Let's take a look at the equations that have been generated by the system here. Let's output the latex from Godly Sim. And take a look at what they are. And there you've now got a, a set of definitions for all those values that were oh, not given in, a, in the previous simulation. So this is self-documenting. And the whole idea, of course, is when you're writing an academic paper or you're trying to analyse dynamics of a system, you can publish and say what the equations are at the same time. But you've defined, in effect, a set of differential equations to talk about the flows through the financial system. And what I'm trying to do with Deminsky is make it possible not just to write you know, numerical arithmetic examples of endogenous money and other models, even learnable funds, but to make it possible to actually simulate them properly and actually have the flows being defined using, using this system. That's a starter. I'll now go on to one more step, which is bringing in the model of the real economy, because I don't want to just have a monetary system devoid of the physical economy in the same way that neoclassical economics has a physical economy devoid of a monetary system. We want to have an integrated one, and that's what Minsky has been written to uh, enable you to do.